errors on the section 1091 of the value added tax at cap 15.42 the act it is provided that the minister of finance may by order published in the gazette amend the schedules in the act and whereas it is further provided under section 1092 of the act that an order made pursuant to section 1091 of the act is subject to an affirmative resolution of parliament except where the amendment is to customs tariff headings only and whereas the minister of finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax amendment schedule 3 number 3 order to amend schedule 3 of the act by an affirmative resolution in parliament to exempt imports of personal items food clothing toys and other household consumables contained in barrels for the period commencing from the first day of november 2023 and terminating on the 29th day of february 2024 b exempt imports of toys food supplies and care packages by a member of the house of assembly for the benefit of children the vulnerable and needy persons in the constituency of the num of the member of the house of assembly for the period commencing first day of november 20 food supplies and care packages by a member of the house of assembly for the benefit of children, the vulnerable, and the needy in the constituency of the member of the House of Assembly for the period commencing from the 1st day of November 2023 <coughs> and terminating on the 31st day of January 2024. Mr. Speaker, this is the motion, a motion, Mr. Speaker, to exempt items in barrels imported between the months of November and I think February, Mr. Speaker, in Point St. Lucia to exempt it from value added tax, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we must pay tribute, Mr. Speaker, to the member, the former Prime Minister, the member from Viewford South, who started that, that, that barrel import for St. Lucians way back in 1990. 1998, Mr. Speaker. And we are continuing, Mr. Speaker, continuing that tradition in exempting these barrels from the, the items in these barrels from VAT, Mr. Speaker. The, the upper limit on the value per barrel is 3,000 EC, Mr. Speaker, and the qualifying items must be for personal use and not commercial use and electronics are excluded mr speaker i want to ask telepool of st lucia that this barrel concession is a privilege that they should not abuse mr speaker and the customs and law enforcement have been mandated to pay strict attention to what is included in these, uh, these barrels. These barrels will not be used for illegal activity. They will not be used, Mr. Speaker, as a cover-up for illegality, Mr. Speaker. So I want to tell the people of St. Lucia that we are going to, law enforcement is going to be very, very strict because we cannot use these barrels as an excuse to import firearms or other illegal items, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, you notice that this incentive is also, will also be enjoyed by parliamentarians, Mr. Speaker. And look at the difference in the way we do our things and the way they do our things. They do their things. We came, we come to the parliament in the open and we say all parliamentarians, regardless of your political color regardless of who where you represent or regardless of what party you represent mr speaker we we are in the open and we see everyone mr speaker when they did it the last time we had to literally squeeze it out of them we had to remove as if 
We are pulling teeth, Mr. Speaker, for them to allow us to do the same thing when they were doing it privately on their own account, Mr. Speaker. That's the difference. That's the difference between the, them and us. That's the difference, Mr. Speaker. We are transparent and we are open, Mr. Speaker. That's the difference. And we accept the will of the people of this country. In 2016, the people in 20, 2016, the people of this country went to the polls and they elected the opposition. Six of us sat on this side of the parliament. They abused us. They gave us no incentives. They took their CDP funds and they shared it among themselves. They gave us nothing. They did us that for five years. Six years, nearly, nearly six years, Mr. Speaker. We sat and we took it. We never went on the outside to, to spread the calumny and the lies that they are spreading on that side, Mr. Speaker. If you listen to the opposition, you think we live in two different solutions. You think there are two different solutions. That a solution that is something in their own imagination and the reality that exists in solution, Mr. Speaker. The opposition, there are people who are saying to their relatives in St. Lucia, they will not send barrels for them because the cost of goods in these places is too high. After they pay the, pay the shipping, they will not be able to make any gains. They prefer to send the money for them in St. Lucia so they can buy the stuff in St. Lucia. But if you listen to them, if you listen to them, Mr. Speaker, you will believe I am the Prime Minister of the world. You'll be, in, you'll be the Prime Minister of the world. You'll believe I'm the one who caused the Ukrainians and the Russians to fight. I'm the one now who caused the Palestinians and Israelis to be in problems. And I'm the one who caused the Panama Canal to be suffering from a drought that will affect supply chain issues. That's, that's what they say. That's what they tell me, Mr. Speaker. All because they do, not, they do not have the patience to lose the last the next two seasons they have in the next election. Ah. <laughs> they do not have the patience to wait to lose the two seats they have in there. <laughs> so if they had that patience, they would, do, they would sit, they would represent the constituencies, take the CDP money that we give them, do something in the constituencies, and stop this calumny and this recklessness and these lies that they tell. And they do not come inside and argue, Mr. Speaker. What they do, they rush out, run outside. Children running, running up, as I said, Daddy, they took my toys. Running outside. They run outside, Mr. Speaker. Run to the press. Run to their favorite media and spew lies. That's what they do. They don't, sit, they don't come and sit down. And, and argue, argue the facts, put pen, on, put pen to paper, show documents, and, and deal with the issues of the country. No, 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 no. Go outside, go in safe environments, and lie. Go in safe environments, and spread calumny. Go in safe environments, and say, that's completely untrue. Go, to, go in safe environments, go in safe environments, Mr. Speaker, and say, say and make pledges that they don't believe. But to come in this parliament, when the people send them, instead of coming here and do what they have to do, Mr. Speaker, they go outside and in their shame and their ruthlessness, they refuse to speak the truth, Mr. Speaker. But as I said, they want elections before independence next year. But why is the opposition so much in a hurry to lose their two seats? <laughs> why are they so much in a hurry? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the mayor from Mikunov, in a few minutes, will support a motion that will improve the water supply in Pasio. He also, Next month, we'll begin work on the Miku jetty. He also, next year, will deal with the Miku preschool. When I come, but you know, Mr. Speaker, I came one day. I said that we're going to win two Denry seats. <coughs> Dusbal, so said, so done. But you know, Mr. Speaker, for the very fact 
that they do not respect the will of the people. The fact that they do not respect the will of the people and they don't understand that the majority fell from 1,000 to 400. Next election, we're going to be taking the 400 votes. So when we come to this honorable house, next election, Mr. Speaker, they will have to be on the outside. And you know, sometimes I laugh because they seem to forget who calls elections. They've forgotten that. You see, they seem to forget who will call elections. They, they forget, they forget. But Mr. Speaker, we have allowed them all the latitude. Talk, talk, quarrel, curse people, lie. We, we all the rope you want. Threaten people. Do all kinds of things. Call on people to attack people's families. Mr. Speaker, do you know, Mr. Speaker, I do not listen to these things that come from certain sections of the these so-called tunnel meetings. <coughs> One day, somebody from abroad called me. And the sad thing is the person was a friend, a friend of the people who were spewing the rubbish. And he said to me, what has politics in St. Lucia turned on? What, where are we? Where, what kind of politics are playing in this country? Right. Where is this country, Mr. Speaker? Where is this country? A prime minister comes to visit and to speak to the a convention, Mr. Speaker. That's not the first thing that, 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 that's happened. Several prime ministers, the prime minister of Grenada was here speaking on the platform of the United Workers' Party. The prime minister of St. Kitts was here speaking on the platform of the United Workers' Party. The prime minister of St. Vincent, one day he came to, to make peace, but he also came to speak on the platform of the, of the United Workers' Party. We listened. They said all kinds of things. A prime minister comes of... <laughs> the one from Belize is not a prime minister. The one from Belize is not a prime minister. He's something else. The one, the one from Belize... The one from Belize... The one from Belize... So, the one from Belize came, Mr. Speaker, and he went to Viewfort. And you know, you know, the, the hypocrisy in these guys, the hypocrisy, the bluff. The one from Belize went to Viewfort. That is the same man, the same man who spoke about horse racing in Viewfort. The same man. The same man who stopped the people's horse racing. The same man who wanted to change the name of the people's country or the people's town from Viewfort to Pearl of the Caribbean. The same man who gave 1,000 acres of land, some of it at 99 cents per square foot. 1,000 acres of land. 1,000 acres. That's the same man who did that. In the parliament. Member for in the Mr. parliament. South, you, Mr. Speaker. You have a point the of order. Yeah. The same man in the parliament. On the point of order. Who spent? Member for Cashews East. Yeah. What is the point of order? I'm mis the member is misleading the house. Please. How is he misleading the house? Because he's saying that there was a, a lease of a thousand acres, or he's giving the impression that there was a thousand. No, no, he never said that. The fact that there was a qualifying wood, most of which. But it's not even most of which. So the fact is, is but that's that subjective, a, isn't it? Hundred and ninety. How can how could a hundred and ninety acres be most of a thousand? So that's not impossible. So there's no there was no not even close to a thousand. Acres. Member for Castries East, please proceed. So the fact is, is that if we're going to, I have the same member for Mikusov. I have asked the member for Castries East to proceed. The same man. Who the same man? Who? 1,000 acres of land in Viewfort. Most of it for 99 cents per square foot. The same man. Speaker, on the point of order again. The same man, Mr. Speaker. Wants to say. Member for Miku South. The same man. I have ruled. The member for Castries will proceed. So he's correct. I have ruled. <laughs> 
Sergeant? Yes, Senor Matthew, no, Mr. Speaker. The same man would put 1,000 acres of land in Viewfort South. Who leased? Who leased? 1,000 acres of land, most of it for 99 cents a square foot. The same man. Member from Eco South. One member of Cash Mr. Speaker. Member for Cash Yes, sir. Inaccurate on. statement, Mr. Speaker. And I cannot sit in the House, Mr. Speaker, and allow that statement to be made because it is a lie. And the member knows that, Mr. Speaker. So I'm asking you. Which one? Strangers with the truth. You are about to lie. <laughs> the same man, the same man who leased 1,000 acres of land, who leased 1,000 acres of land, most of it at 99 cents a square foot, wants to call a solution. A solution. Mr. Speaker, who again, bought a few Mr. Speaker, acres, I have bought, bought a half acre of land. Of land. The, the same man Mr. wants Mr. to call leading the house. An entity. Wants to call it is it not more than the land. Remember the cash freeze. You know why he's not going to find the land? Because he's a product of Canada. That's his problem. Remember the cash freeze. The same man who is a product of Canada. Remember the cash freeze. East just hold on. Remember, I have ruled on three occasions. I will not allow you to raise this issue again. But I have Please, to, Mr. Speaker. No, you will not have to. Member, you will take your house, seat. And I'm member. sorry that he's misled you as well. But member, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, that is not as much as a thousand, as a five hundred acres. Member from Mikusov, please take your seat. Yes, Mr. Speaker, member from Mikusov, I'm asking Mr. Speaker, please is true, take is your seat. True, does the member prove that there was more than 500 acres that was leased? Member, I'm it's not going to ask you to take your seat again. But I'm asking you, Mr. Speaker. No, I'm not going to ask you again. Clarified. Do not how debate you allow, with the presiding officer. How can you a member of the House to mislead the House? Take, how can you do Are that? you going to take your seat? No, Mr. Speaker. I'm um, Sergeant. No. Are you going to take your seat? I'm not taking my seat until you can give me a satisfactory answer. Mr. Remember, I have you made a ruling. To come to this house and please leave the house take completely. your seat. It's a lie, Mr. Speaker. And I'm asking you to stand up. Members of GIS, under the standing orders, I do have the authority to ask you to turn off your cameras while I'm about to do what I have to do. <laughs> Please, t please take your seat. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition does not want to come in this honorable house and listen to argument and listen to fact and defend himself. What he wants to do is go in a safe environment, in a safe environment, and say whatever he wants, when nobody will challenge him. But when you come inside here, whilst you're here, you're going to be challenged on the truth. And nothing you can do about it. Nothing. You have to sit there and listen. Uh, Mr. Speaker. You see, Mr. Speaker? They believe. They believe, Mr. Speaker. Because they are products of Canada. They can come to this honorable house. And because they believe that they are products of Canada, Mr. Speaker. They can come to this honorable house. Or go into this country. And completely mislead the public about what the Prime Minister of Grenada said. The Prime Minister of Grenada never said to be Prime Minister St. Lucia, he must be born in St. Lucia. He never said so. He never said so. And the record will show that he never said so. But, but you know, these old Nazi tactics repeat the same thing all the time. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, and people will believe it, Mr. Speaker. They tried that for five years. Between 2016 and 2021, we beat them in the elections. You know what they said? They said a 15-2 majority is no majority. You ever heard that? that? We beat you 15-2. You say you have no majority? But you know what we'll do? We'll take this too. So, Mr. Speaker, if they believe that they can, they can threaten us, if they believe they can run us out, if they believe that we are weak and because we are focused on running the country, if they believe that they can go out there and say whatever one means to be talking about people's body parts, you want to believe that? You want to believe that? In a public meeting, they're about people's body parts, calling people dogs, calling people mongrels. You want to believe that? But you know, that's his habit. Because he's the same man who said, let the backing dogs back. 
So that's the habit of calling people dogs. That's it. Let the jackasses bray. The same man. But you know, what will happen to him? What will happen to him? Is history will come back to haunt him. Because technology has made it possible. For everything I see, and every day everybody is honorable houses to be replayed. And we just begin to replay what has been said. We just begin to replay it. Because, Mr. Speaker, we can't allow it to happen because young people are listening, Mr. Speaker. Young people listen to these lies. We don't tell Mr. Speaker. We decided. And tomorrow, the Prime Minister of Britain, and I'm talking about that and items, consumer items, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister of Britain tomorrow will go to Parliament to have a policy on feminine products. <coughs> tomorrow, Prime Minister of Britain, we, in this honorable house, pass legislation to remove VAT on feminine products. They made a joke out of it. They had a demonstration, have had people with pampers. Well, I mean, what kind of respect you have for the elderly of this country? You have people with pampers in a demonstration because the government removed VAT on feminine products. They know nothing about pre and poverty. And when you talk to them about that, they draw them and say, oh, oh, I can identify you, said Lucia. Hypocrites. It means that we go, so they, suddenly, suddenly, they no longer products of Canada. Suddenly, they no longer want to make our, they no want to, they no longer want us to follow Norway, but they can identify you, Saint Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And there are some hypocrites in this society. When you use some words, they pretend as if these words, they pretend about these words, they, they pretend as if these words are, these words are, these words are something that you, you mustn't say. You mustn't say these words, Mr. Speaker, because of the hypocrisy. They accuse us. They accuse us, Mr. Speaker, of speaking about racism, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on a platform in Chosel, a member of the United Workers' Party said in public, and you know, I want to open it up. Because if they believe, they'll make us say some words and first run behind it. Boy, that's racism, that's racism. I'll open it up. I'll open it up. Went on a platform in Chosel, and he said, he will not vote for a black man as prime minister. Yes. He will vote for a white man. Yes. No member of the United Workers Party Sorry. ever said he should not say that. Uh, never corrected him. Yes, the member for the member for Viewford South. The member for South. He had to go on the television and the radio and say that he he was not what they were saying. He was not what they were saying. He is, Mr. Speaker. They never corrected him. They never cry, Mr. Speaker. But suddenly, if you speak about your identity, if you speak about your identity, if you speak about you are proud to be, if you speak about to be proud of what you are, Mr. Speaker, they talk all about racism, racism, Mr. Speaker, to make people run and hide and hide behind these emotional words, Mr. Speaker. But we are not going to hide behind it. We are proud, Mr. Speaker, to say where we came from, where we are now. We're very proud. We are very proud, Mr. Speaker. And you know, you know, Mr. Speaker, I'll put the public of St. Lucia notice. We are now going to call them out for their lies and call them out for their deception. That is starting now. We're not going to allow people to go on the radio, go in and and soil the, the, the names of, of men and women in this country and lie and say all kinds of that never happened, blame us for things. We have absolutely no control over Mr. Speaker. We put, Mr. Speaker, I'm speaking about VAT again. These items, Mr. Speaker, they, they will not attract the 2.5% levy. They will attract it. The items in the barrels will not attract the 2.5% levy. But if you hear them, if you heard them, if you heard them, if you heard them, Mr. Speaker, if you heard them, if you heard them, two point five percent levy. But as the same man, and the cabinet conclusion will show 
who had a cabinet meeting. And in that cabinet conclusion, he said they have to consider putting a health and security levy. And that's the same man who was in a government. And the member for and the member for view for cash is not. Member for cash is Member for Mikusa. Member is misleading the House. If the member, if there is any cabinet conclusion that says that, Mr. Speaker, I think that he ought to make it a document to the House, Mr. Speaker. But you, you can bring that cabinet conclusion at a subsequent meeting. Oh. Your word today that he is misleading because I don't, I don't he has to bring it. Mr. Speaker, all I enough. know is that we spoke about a health insurance program, but we've never spoken about a health and security levy. That's his imagination. That's his baby. That, that's, that's the bucket that he has to carry, not me. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, he was in the government. When they came here and they passed a security tax, they were in the government, you know. And you know, Mr. Speaker, that hypocrisy. He was in the government when they came and they passed a security tax. And it and the member for Castries North has admitted that he was prime minister when they passed a security tax. He admitted that they were prime minister. He said they passed it at the right time because it was a, it was nasty at the time, Mr. Speaker. But if you hear him, if you hear him talk about health and security levy, you'll think that we have we've done something that's that is out of this world. There is something we have destroyed the economy. We have destroyed everything, Mr. Speaker. But he cannot tell us. He spoke about health insurance. There is not one document I have seen that speaks about anything about health insurance that builds in Russia. That's what I have seen. Mr. Speaker, again, the member is misleading the House. <laughs> member for Cassius East, you just take your seat, yes. There has been press conferences, there's document, there were, there were consultants hired by the World Bank specifically to do with health care insurance. There were several meetings throughout this length and breadth of society. We spoke about it in every single document. So again, the member is misleading the House in suggesting that there was never any discussions. Mr. Speaker, no, I no, never no, said no, there was no, no discussion. Member for I never said, Mr. Speaker. Member for Cassius is member for Miku South, if you are going to rise on points of order, you respond to what was said. The member of Acacias East said he has never seen. He never spoke about press conferences and said he has never seen. Are you going to tell him what he has seen? Thank you. No, Mr. Speaker, but I would make the point that as Prime Minister, if he's not seen it, then I'm even more worried than I am now. But that's about not that's not a point of order. That's not a point of order. Well, that's the point I have to say, Mr. Speaker. That's not a point of order. He said that there is a, a program in which we spend money. Member and from Miku South. For it, Mr. Speaker. That's and not. Therefore, then he he I am more worried because it means that he's misleading the, the whole country. Member, and he's mismanaging the country. Member, what else do I? I mean, he, he, for member from Miku says, South. No. Member from Miku South. It would appear that one of your purposes here today is to cause me to do something. That won't happen. But, member, if you're going to rise, I've allowed you to rise on six occasions. If you're going to rise on a point of order, it ought to be a point of order. If the member for Castries E says he has not seen, I don't know what point of order you can rise on to tell him what he has seen. Please proceed, member for Castries E. Yes, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have not seen any document in the office. I have not seen that says anything about health insurance. I have not seen it. Mr. Speaker, it's the same way they went around and they abused, they, they abused reporters. Tell them, I'm ashamed of you. A reporter asked me whether I have read. I said, that's his business. What I read is my business. How are you going to ask me what I read? I said to him, that's not your business, because what I read is what I read. Yes, sir. I don't, what, what's wrong with that? I didn't say, I didn't insult him. I didn't tell him I was ashamed of him. <coughs> I didn't walk out on him. I didn't call him, I didn't call him a criminal. I didn't call him a jailbird. No. I, all I said was, that is not your business, what I've read. That's all I said. Yes, and anybody who asks me what's in my business, I tell them that's not your business. So, Mr. Speaker, we are again, again, trying to give 
continue to give relief to the people of this country. And that is why, as I said previously, there is no, there is no health and security levy on the items in this barrier to the speaker. So Mr. Speaker, as I end, because today is a very long day. We have a long day today, Mr. Speaker. Because today, we will begin the government's response. Because they believe that we've been sleeping. But whilst we've been focused on managing the economy, as the Carrie Chris report says, we are politicians. And we shall respond. So, I'm putting them on notice. Anytime, anytime they lie, anytime they, they deny that they said they were products of Canada, anytime they deny that they were in government, you see, Mr. Speaker, they behave, they behave as if they were not in government. They, they were never in government. You just start to cry. They forget these things. All of these things will come back. So I'm putting them on notice that we are now going to respond. We are going to make, we are going to tell the public about what this government is doing because the public is feeling it. The public is seeing how this country is progressing. Mr. Mr. Speaker, next year, Mr. Speaker, I heard one of them say, I said that next year is a year of infrastructure. So, so, so what happened to this year? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, no wonder these guys lost elections, you know. No one they lost elections. You know, there are guys who are failures. People vote them out of government. Now they are out of government. But Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to say I've won six elections. Six. And you can do whatever you want. The fact is, you must put it in your pipe and you must smoke it. I've won six elections. You lost one. I won't tell, I won't tell you how you got the, how you got the other one that you won. You lost one. I won't tell you how this, you said that, not me. I won't tell you. I, won, I lost one and I won six. I won six, you understand? And that's what you can't take. You have to take it all the time, Mr. Speaker, because you see, your hatred and your envy will get you nowhere. And I'm I don't love you. I don't love you. Your I don't love you. Look at me. I don't love you. Your hatred and your envy will get you nowhere. And I'm saying to you that when you continue like that, in the next election, we might leave Bradley, but not you. Thank you very much.